morning. Good morning. <laughs> Thank you for that. That was beautiful. Thank you. Uh, good morning. morning. Welcome to worship on this beautiful spring day as we gather to worship and give thanks and praise to God. We wish a good morning also to all of you who are worshiping with us online. We pray that you're well and we're grateful that you're participating in our community in this way. There's a white rose on the altar this morning in memory of Marley Eddy. 
a longtime member of our congregation who died on Friday. Um, I can assure you that it was very, very peaceful. So um, service arrangements are pending, and we ask that you keep her family in your prayers as they mourn. We are reminded, especially in this season, of the power of Christ's resurrection and the assurance that it gives us that we will one day be united with our loved ones around God's table. It is this assurance that gives us the confidence to bear witness to Jesus in our lives and in our world. I invite you to stand as we sing our opening hymn.
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sins, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Amen. Seeking reconciliation with God and neighbor, let us remember the gift of baptism and confess our sins. To you, O oh God, all hearts are open and all desires known. We come to you confessing our sins. Forgive us in your mercy and remember us in your love. Show us your ways, teach us your paths, and lead us in justice and truth for the sake of your goodness in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. By water and the Holy Spirit, God gives you a new birth. And through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, God forgives you all your sins. The God of mercy and might strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray together. Holy and righteous God, you are the author of life and you adopt us to be your children. Fill us with your words of life that we may live as witnesses to the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Kids, come on over here to the font. You can bring a grown-up with you if you want. And if any kids at heart want to join, you can do that too. And Abigail's got her snacks, so we're all set. Hey, how's everybody? Good. Spring break is over. Some people are on spring break. Yeah? Okay. So I've got some pictures I want to show you. You guys tell me who this is? Firefighter, Firefighter right. How do we know? Right? His helmet and his clothes, right? Okay. Who is this? A police officer, how do we know? Has a badge, right? And then a hat and the whole uniform, right? Okay. Oops, it keeps slipping. Who is this? An astronaut, how do we know? It's a spacesuit, right? Okay. Okay. Who are these people? Doctors and nurses, how do we know? (coughs) 
they have all the stuff that they need, right? We can see it, right? Okay, they've got masks and sometimes they wear scrubs and coats and all the stuff, okay? Who's this? It's a cross, and Jesus, right? This is what we usually think of when we think of Jesus, right? How do we know? Because it has a cross, right? So we are supposed to be like Jesus, right? Right? Part of the way we do that is we show love for people. And in the story we're going to hear in just a minute, a man experiences Jesus. He doesn't get to see Jesus but he gets to experience Jesus through the faith of other people. And it changes his life so much that he literally jumps up, like jumps up from his seat. He was sitting down because he couldn't walk. He jumps up, starts walking, and praising God, and almost dancing, like basically dancing as he goes into church. And it completely changed the way he lived his life. And when we are like Jesus, we don't have to like jump up and dance all around. But we show people who we are by the way we love people. And so some of the ways we love people, we make sure that they have enough food, they have enough water. You guys have heard me talk about this before, right? Share your toys, do your chores before mom and dad ask you to. Not always hard, not always easy, right? Do your chores, yeah? You don't have chores? Oh my gosh, kids at heart, how many of you don't have chores? <laughs> Everybody's got chores. But you do stuff like that, right? It's one of the, it's, it's, there are lots of different ways to show that we love Jesus, and that's how people know that we love Jesus, is, is by showing that love, okay? Does that make sense? Okay, let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for showing us how to love and teaching us how to love others. Amen. Thanks, you guys. Our reading today is from Acts chapter 3, verses 1 through 16. One day, Peter and John, going up to the temple at the hour of prayer at three o'clock in the afternoon, saw a man lame from birth was, who was being carried in. People would lay him daily at the gate of the temple called the Beautiful Gate so that he could ask for alms from those entering the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked them for alms. Peter looked intently at him, as did John, and said, look at us. And he fixed his attention on them, expecting to receive something from them. But Peter said, I have no silver or gold, but what I have, I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, stand up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and raised him up. And immediately his feet and ankles were made strong. Jumping up, he stood and began to walk. And he entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. All the people saw him walking and praising God, and they recognized him as the one who used to sit and ask for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. While he clung to Peter and John, all the people ran together to them in the portico, called Solomon's portico, utterly astonished. When Peter saw it, he addressed the people. You Israelites, why do you wonder at this, or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety we had made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the holy and righteous one and asked to have a murderer given to you, and you killed the author of life whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. Word of God. Word.
Grace to you and peace from our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. On the Sundays, okay, first, before I jump into this sermon, how many of you, when hearing this reading, went back to either a VBS or a Sunday school song that starts out, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee? Do any of you remember that? Yeah? Okay, we're not going to sing it. I won't make you do that. If, oh, if we sing it, you have to sing it with me, because I will not sing it solo. What do you say? Gene, will you help? Where are you? Will you help? Will, will you stand up? Thanks. All right, are we in on this? We ready? Promise? All right. Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Stand up. He was walking and leaping and praising God. Walking and leaping and praising God in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. Thank you. That was fun. All right. Okay, now for the serious part. <laughs> um, on Sundays from now through the day of Pentecost, um, our readings are all about the early church, how the apostles responded to the risen Christ and to the Holy Spirit as they were commissioned as witnesses of Jesus in the world. Last Sunday, Jean and Doug, I don't know where you ended up, uh, did a fantastic job setting that up for us, wondering about the questions that the apostles might have asked the stories that they held and told and um, held on to, and how they lived into Jesus' commission, reminding us that it's our commission too. Our reading today picks up about 10 or so days after last Sunday's. We skip the story of the apostles actually receiving the Holy Spirit, because we'll celebrate that in a few weeks um, on the day of Pentecost as it's scheduled on the church's calendar, um, as if we can schedule the Holy Spirit. But where we left off, the disciples have been told to wait. And in our story today, they don't have anything holding them back. They have received the Holy Spirit and are free to go and bear witness in Jesus' name, which is what Peter and John do, but maybe not what they set out to do. They were just going to the temple to pray, and then everything changed. This is very much an Easter story. The power of the resurrection was revealed in Peter's and John's faith, and then in the man who was born lame as he was made strong and able to walk. And once it was revealed in the man, there was no containing it. Everyone around them knew what had happened. When we talked about this reading in Bible study last week, we all, me included, talked about this man's healing that when Peter took him by the hand and he was able to walk, he had been healed. I read this reading several times after that discussion as I was preparing for today. And I noticed that the NRSV, the Bible translation that we use in our bulletin, never uses the word healed or healing to describe the miracle this man received in being able to walk after having been born lame. He was simply made strong and able to walk. And that might seem like a minor detail, or even like I'm splitting hairs, but I checked several other translations, and none of them say that this man was healed. In each one, he was made strong and able to walk. And the fact that the word healing isn't used speaks volumes about who the man was before God, that he was enough as he was. But he wasn't able to live the full life God intended for him because of the way society related to him. It was likely that his condition was understood to be a form of punishment, that God had withheld blessing from him for some reason. And he was defined by the fact that he couldn't walk. That's how he was known. People who passed him on their way would say, oh, there's that guy who can't walk. That was his identity. The only way he could make a living was to beg. That was the basis of his interactions with people. And he had to rely on friends or family to bring him to the temple gate every day so that he could do that. But for all intents and purposes, he was excluded from day-to-day -day life. And the fact that his encounter with the risen Christ through Peter and John 
led to his being able to walk is a miracle that ought to be celebrated. But if we only focus on that, we still ignore him as a person and attach his identity to how he physically moves through the world. As Christians, we are witnesses of a resurrected Jesus who has all his scars. <clears throat> and living a resurrection life is about people living a full life now, today, being included as they are. That's the life Jesus invites us into, a life that accepts people as they are, their whole selves, a life of community as part of a community, one that works to include everyone in all aspects of our lives. That is where the miracles happen. I still have an account on X, formerly known as Twitter. It's good entertainment sometimes. And I receive a lot of notifications from accounts that I don't follow. Normally, I just swipe right and ignore them. Last week, I received one from the Washington Military Department, which I'd never heard of. And I was getting ready to swipe right, but the preview was, can you imagine eight blind people trying to cram themselves under a doorframe in an earthquake? We would topple like dominoes. And it sounds funny, but it's completely serious. It's the opening sentence of a blog post titled, Preparedness is for Everyone. And the blog is about lessons, this particular post is about lessons learned from teaching disaster preparedness to young adults who are blind or who have low vision at the Learning Independence for Today and Tomorrow program at the Washington State School for the Blind in Vancouver. Among other things, the instructors from the Washington Military Department learned that simply translating disaster preparedness information into Braille is fine for the short term, but eventually the raised dots break down and become hard to read. So their conversation with the participants in this program was quite candid because the participants didn't pull any punches. They wanted and needed to know how to navigate earthquakes and extreme weather and all the other things Washington State might throw at people. Like, how do they access information? Is an emergency preparedness kit different for them? Those kinds of things. And the lessons that the instructors learned all came back to accessibility for everyone, not just for people who have limited or no vision. And it made them consider that what a lot of people take for granted doesn't work for people who move through the world differently, physically, cognitively, and otherwise. And that possible solutions aren't always obvious or as good as we think they might be. I share this not to make anyone feel bad, but as an example of where people's attention tends to land or not. And I share it with the admission that my attention doesn't always land where it should. And recognizing a person as a whole is part of our commission as witnesses to the risen Christ. As we think about all of this, especially in the Easter season, we remember that we're witnesses of a resurrected Jesus who has all his scars. And that's important, because even with its scars, and maybe even because of its scars, Jesus' resurrected body still has a story to tell. And that story remains even today, because Jesus' scars don't diminish the good news of his resurrection. When the apostles went out and told people about the risen Christ, they shared stories about the things he taught them, the people they met, the lives that were changed. But they also shared stories about their own mistakes and the fear they felt about Jesus' arrest and crucifixion. And they shared, too, about his resurrection, about how they touched his scars, the places where he was wounded and broken, and how the power of life that Jesus brought into the world was still transforming people's lives. Easter, Christ's resurrection, isn't about the creation of an idealized body. Damaged, sick, weary, and broken bodies still manifest the image of God and still testify to God's power. We all have struggles and griefs that shape who we are, 
And in our witness, we point to our own scars as we share how the power of Christ's resurrection manifests itself through the memories and hopes that we carry. We aren't told how the man in today's reading shared his story, but you can bet that he pointed to his ankles and feet as he did it. We share that power, that hope, as part of our identity. And as we share it with others, it helps shape their identity. And as others share their experiences of resurrection, hope, and glory with us, the fullness of life that resurrection brings to all people becomes manifest. And everyone is able to experience it as they are. That's what resurrection life is all about. That's the life the risen Christ commissions us to live, and it's the life he invites us into. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Amen. Trusting in God's baptismal promises, we affirm our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. Living God, in the midst of Easter joy,
we still encounter the world's brokenness. Open our hearts and minds so that we, as your church, may embody the risen Christ to all nations. Lord, in your mercy. Here we are. You have fashioned the universe out of your love and delight. Inspire us to work to create a sustainable home for generations to come. Heal the people and places that are in need of restoration after severe weather. Lord, in your mercy. Grant humility to all who are in positions of power that they may lead with compassion and a sense of your justice. Bring peace and stability to areas of war and violence, especially in Myanmar, Haiti, South Sudan, Israel and Palestine, and Russia and Ukraine. Lord, in your mercy. Bring consolation to all who mourn especially the family of Marlietti. Embrace all who feel excluded or defeated. Accompany those living with chronic and invisible illness and sustain all who are weak or who are weary. We pray especially for Bill, Marlis, Andy, Marge, Tom, Julie, Lois, Blenda, yeah. Leslie, yeah. Philip, Craig, Amy, Greta, Jackie, Duane, Ralph, Linda, Alexandra, Beverly, Misty, all caregivers and all we lift up before you now. For whom and what would you pray today? Lord, in your mercy. We give you thanks for our congregation and the opportunities you give us to serve with our ministry partners, especially Kidvantage. Help us to be faithful witnesses to your justice and grace. Lord, in your mercy. We remember with thanksgiving all your beloved saints who taught us what it means to live a life of faith, especially Marley. As you have raised them to eternal life, abide with us in your promise of resurrection. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love. Through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Thank you. Please share God's peace with one another. Peace to all of you who are worshiping with us online. Jeff Thiel has a quick announcement before I continue. I gotta do that carefully. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor. Um, four years ago, I had the privilege, privilege of leading a discussion in the forum here about the climate crisis and what our Christian response should be to it. Well, a lot has changed since then. We have a new pastor. We've had a pandemic. Um, but the climate crisis hasn't gone away. In fact, it's intensified. 
And uh, so the next two Sundays, I'm going to lead a discussion about how we can put our faith into action. And I invite you all to join us at 9 o'clock next Sunday. We're going to have some fun. We won't sing silver and gold, but we will, do, we will start with the uh, climate news quiz, a little competitive uh, game to get everybody to test everybody's uh, knowledge and, and how closely you've been paying attention to what's been happening. And then the following Sunday, we will um, develop a household action plan for you. So I hope you can all, all join us for the next two Sundays. Thank you. We will receive communion today continuously. Uh, two stations at the front of the altar. Please follow the usher's instructions as you come forward to receive. Uh, and for all of the rest of the announcements, please, please, please check today's bulletin, the church's social media and website and publication. There is a lot of stuff going on, lots of ways for you to be involved in our community um, for worship and for service and for fellowship. As we continue with our musical offering, we do take this time to reflect on the gifts that God has given to us and give thanks.
We pray together. Risen one, you call us to believe and bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Savior. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, blessed and broke it and shared it with his friends, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We pray together the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. This meal is the gift of God for the people of God. All are invited and all are welcome to receive this gift of grace. Please be seated as I commune our people who are worshiping online. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you.
Please stand. Let us pray together. Shepherding God, you have prepared a table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you. Hallelujah. <laughs> Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. May the God of resurrection power, the Christ of unending joy, and the spirit of Easter hope bless you now and always. Amen. Amen.